because he knew them all. There was no need for anyone to tell him about them, because he himself knew what was in their hearts. There was a Jewish leader named Nicodemus, who belonged to the party of the Pharisees. One night, he went to Jesus. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent by God. No one could perform the miracles you are doing unless God were with him. I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. How can a grown man be born again? He certainly cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time. I am telling you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. A person is born physically of human parents, but is born spiritually of the spirit. Do not be surprised, because I tell you that you must all be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes. You hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. It is like that with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be? You are a great teacher in Israel, and you don't know this. I am telling you the truth. We speak of what we know and report what we have seen. Yet none of you is willing to accept our message. You do not believe me when I tell you about the things of this world. How will you ever believe me then when I tell you about the things of heaven? And no one has ever gone up to heaven except the Son of Man who came down from heaven. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its savior. Those who believe in the Son are not judged. But those who do not believe have already been judged because they have not believed in God's only Son. This is how the judgment works. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil. Those who do evil things hate the light and will not come to the light because they do not want their evil deed to be shown up. But those who do what is true come to the light in order that the light may show that what they did was in obedience to God. After this, Jesus and his disciples went to the province of Judea, where he spent some time with them and baptized. John also was baptizing in Anon, not far from Salim, because there was plenty of water in that place. People were going to him, and he was baptizing them. This was before John had been put in prison. Some of John's disciples began arguing with a Jew about the matter of ritual washing. Teacher, you remember the man who was with you on the east side of Jordan, the one you spoke about? Well, he is baptizing now, and everyone's going to him. No one can have anything unless God gives it. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I've been sent ahead of him. The bridegroom is the one to whom the bride belongs, but the bridegroom's friend, who stands by and listens, is glad when he hears the bridegroom's voice. This is how my own happiness is made complete. He must become more important, while I become less important. He who comes from above is greater than all. He who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly matters. But he who comes from heaven is above all. He tells what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his message. 
But whoever accepts his message confirms by this that God is truthful. The one whom God has sent speaks God's words because God gives him the fullness of his spirit. The father loves his son and has put everything in his power. Whoever believes in the son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the son will not have life, but will remain under God's punishment. The Pharisees heard that Jesus was winning and baptizing more disciples than John. Actually, Jesus himself did not baptize anyone, only his disciples did. So when Jesus heard what was being said, he left Judea and went back to Galilee. On his way there, he had to go through Samaria. In Samaria, he came to a town named Sychar which was not far from the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by the trip, sat down by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw some water. Give me a drink of water. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. So how can you ask me for a drink? Jews will not use the same cups and bowls that Samaritans use. If you only knew what God gives, and who it is that is asking you for a drink, you would ask him. And he would give you a life-giving water. Sir, you don't have a bucket and the well is deep. Where would you get that life-giving water? It was our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well. He and his children and his flocks all drank from it. You don't claim to be greater than Jacob, do you? Those who drink this water will get thirsty again. But those who drink the water that I will give them will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring which will provide them with life-giving water and give them eternal life. Sir, give me that water. Then I will never be thirsty again. Nor will I have to come here to draw water. Go and call your husband and come back. I don't have a husband. You are right when you say you don't have a husband. You've been married to five men, and the man you live with now is not really your husband. You have told me the truth. You are a prophet, sir. My Samaritan ancestors worshipped God on this mountain. But you Jews say that Jerusalem is the place where we should worship God. Believe me, woman. The time will come when people will not worship the Father either on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not really know whom you worship. But we Jews know whom we worship because it is from the Jews that salvation comes. But the time is coming and is already here, when by the power of God's Spirit, people will worship the Father as he really is, offering him the true worship that he wants. God is Spirit, and only by the power of his Spirit can people worship him as he really is. I know that the Messiah will come, and when he comes, he will tell us everything. I am he, I who am talking with you. At that moment, Jesus' disciples returned, and they were greatly surprised to find him talking with a woman. But none of them said to her, what do you want? Or asked him, why are you talking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the town. and see the man who told me everything I've ever done. Could he be the Messiah? So they left the town and went to Jesus. In the meantime, the disciples were begging Jesus, Teacher, have something to eat. But he answered, 